In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Once again, welcome to our celebration of this sacred mystery. We celebrate today the great feast of Corpus Christi, the uh, solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. In order to do so worthily, let us call to mind our failing and ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so we pray. As we enter into prayer, let us remember in a special way Seraphina Rufo, for whom this Mass is being offered. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, after Abraham's return, King Nelson's death of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God most high. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Also, 
after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. provides for those 
who are hungry. He says to the apostles, give them something to eat. What? We had a couple of pieces of bread and a couple of fish. We got thousands of people here. Are we supposed to go out and buy stuff for them? Jesus says, make them sit down. Little by little, after the blessing of the bread and the fish, that little amount, a lot of people were fed. You gotta remember that. Because when you and I come to this altar and we receive the body and blood of Christ in communion, in many ways we become, as church, the body of Christ. And we bring that nourishment through the grace of God to those we encounter in our journey of faith and our journey of life. We become a blessing to those people that we meet. You may say, oh, brother, you know, I don't have much talent, I don't have many abilities, I don't have many gifts, uh, I'm just a little person. A little, a lot can be done if we allow the Lord to work through us. So either we believe that this will be the body and blood of Christ, and in receiving it, we become the body of Christ and bring that grace to the people we meet to spread the love of the Father for all creation. Or we don't. To understand it, you know what? In my studies, St. Augustine Seminary has hundreds of books on the Feast of Corpus Christi. Hundreds of them. Deacon John will, will, will uh, agree to that. Hundreds of books on it. In the Vatican, thousands of books. Throughout the world, millions of books on the body and blood of Christ. It simply comes down to either I believe or I don't. Because at the end of each and every one of those books, it's still a mystery. We will understand it when we encounter our God in the fullness of time. None of us are in a great rush to get there and understand a bunch of things, but we will when it is time. And so we will continue then around God's table. And we will once again have this precious gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here in our midst. And we will be invited to receive it. And in receiving it, in another mystery, we will continue to be the body of Christ, encountering those along our journey of faith, our journey of life, as a sign of God's love, not only for us, but for them. Would you now please stand for the prayers of faith? For the church, that in a world of dark, like conflict and strife, it may be a beacon of unity and a haven of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine and all other countries where there is senseless violence, killing, and destruction. May all of our world leaders work together for justice and freedom. For all, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all fathers this weekend, in gratitude for their love and self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all those who are ill, especially Rosemary Rogas, Ryan Kinnamore, Olivia Lambetta, John the Rogan, Christine Boyd, Joseph Kassar, Mary Teresa O'Reilly, Anne Hannon, John Krasinski, Joe Visneski, Gabriel Moore, Joan Jones, Gary Gardner, Carrie Ann Fraser, Stephanie Armstrong, Ryan Gavin, Colleen Richard, Autumn Jean, and Mary McDermott. May God comfort them in their time of need 
we pray to the Lord. For our departed relatives and friends who partook in the Eucharist, that God may bring them to a place of refreshment, light, and peace, we pray to the Lord. We also pray for Father Keith, who will be retiring next week, that God may guide over him, bless him with good health and happiness. We pray to the Lord. And for our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we offer you our prayer of faith and hope and trust. Most especially, we offer our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. So that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foretold. Therefore, we join the angels and saints in declaring now your glory.
by sending down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. A gentle reminder that we have a protocol for communion here. We do section by section. I'll come to this section. If you come up the main aisle, return the side aisle, please. Come over to this section. Up the main aisle, return by the side aisle. While we're doing this, Deacon John will take care of that section. Come up the side aisle, return by the far wall aisle, please.
Now I think, uh, in the words of a uh, very distinguished uh, parishioner, after communion, I'm supposed to sit down and shut up. <laughs> Father, uh, Reverend John Deacon, uh, just an announcement before we start. I have a few presentations that will be given to Father Keith before the final blessing of the Mass. And uh, then we're all going to be walking downstairs for a social and uh, spend some time with Father Keith. Uh, not too much time left. At this time, I'd like to welcome up our Grand Knight for St. Jude's Council, Brother Tom Newley, for a presentation. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus tells the parable of the fig tree that was producing no fruit. The owner of the garden saw this fig tree and said to his servants, get rid of it, it's taking up space. But the gardener intervened and persuaded the owner to give him a year. The gardener would weed around the fig tree, would fertilize it, and take care of it in the hopes it would produce fruit. Father Keith, you have been a gardener to us. You planted seeds of hope and love through your relationships, your homilies, your spiritual reflections you shared with us as knights. You nurtured us with your wisdom, with respect, with understanding, and kindness. And you supported our work as knights. And through you, we became a better council. So in recognition of all that you have done, we offer you this plaque. It reads, presented to Father Keith Callahan in appreciation for his dedicated support, faithful leadership, and selfless service to the Knights of Columbus St. Jude's Council, number 6052, 2008 to 2022. As a gardener, Keith, you took good care of us. We thank you. And it was truly amazing and deeply appreciated that when you were fertilizing, you didn't use any manure. <laughs> Dear Father Keith, there's a real sense of community in this parish which can be directly attributed to your care and influence. Many CWO members and parishioners have expressed their gratitude that you have been here to guide and nurture their faith over the years. During these last two years of uncertainty, many parishioners found comfort in watching you say Mass in their own church when they could not be here in person. You may not have watched the masses, but over the last two years, there was a total of about 7,900 viewers for our weekly masses, and that comes out to nearly 1,600 viewing hours. People watch not just the weekly mass, but some would also view previously aired masses, maybe for a particular sermon or a favorite hymn. At our last meeting, 
you ask that CWL members continue to keep you in their prayers. So I would like to present to you this spiritual bouquet. These offerings were made not only by CWL members, but also for members of the Knights of Columbus and St. June Council as well. I've been told that retirement is the best job ever, and I hope you will be an outstanding and enjoy your new adventure. Thank you. churches, not only Holy Cross here, but also St. Philip's in the South End. And today uh, we have a representative of St. Philip's uh, to say a few words. Please help me walk on the altar of God. Someone like you leading us 
um, and really demonstrating what Jesus calls all of us to be and do. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Um, our community has, has grown in compassion, it has grown in love, and it has been in good hands under your watch. Thank you so much. Um, I have uh, two of our principals here uh, who actually wanted to share something with you as well. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> we never knew we were going to speak, Father, so you're probably lucky I didn't get a chance to prepare anything. No, I'm Mike. <laughs> My name is Mike Goff, and I'm the principal of Monsignor Philip Coffee Catholic School. And it's one of the many schools that Father um, is, covers his parish. Um, it's part of the St. Philip uh, Parish. On behalf, and, 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 but on behalf of um, the other principals and the many principals of the school, so St. Thomas Aquinas, Monsignor Philip Coffey, Monsignor John Prima, Catholic Secondary School, and am I missing one? That's it. That's it? <laughs> Um, I want to thank you. You know, we talk about the, or we don't, um, but there's something called the art of accompaniment. And that is being led spiritually along, and, and you walk alongside of us, and alongside of our families, and alongside of our students and staff. And you've always been there. And if you've ever, you probably haven't had the opportunity to be in a, a mass with Father Keith at a school mass. It is something to behold. I, I love preparing for them because, you know, we color outside the lines a little bit. Father Keith tends to color outside the lines a little bit. But, you know, it's at a level where the students understand. And it's not above them at all. And, and he guides them. And, and really, what, that's what he, he does. He guides them in a conversation with Jesus and with God. And he helps them develop that relationship and that friendship with God. And, and it's at their level. And there's a lot, of, a lot of talking to God and a lot of PSs and a lot about the Leafs and a lot about my age. And there's all sorts of things that they talk to God about. But Father, uh, you know, you, you are special and you are going to be missed. And we thank you very much for your guidance and your friendship. My name is Jennifer Harvey and I'm currently the principal of St. Bernard, but I have had the distinct pleasure of working with Father in a professional way as well as a personal friend. I was the principal at St. Thomas Aquinas and I have to chuckle when Mike was saying that it was always fun to prepare for a Mass with Father Keith because I always laugh, there is no preparation for a Mass with Father Keith. You never knew what was coming, you never knew what he was going to say, you just hope he showed up because you would often be a little late and you'd be looking at your watch and dreading and worried all the kids are sitting because if you know uh, for a school, the, the younger kids, they have a really hard time sitting. So I was always stressing, when's he getting here? They've already been sitting five minutes, or you know, stressing like that. But honestly, in my role, I have worked uh, in a few schools and with many different parishes. And I have never worked in a parish where the priest was a celebrity. And I honestly can say that. When Father Keith came into the building, he needed no announcement because you would hear the squeals of the children. And I'm not exaggerating. He, they would run to him, they would flock to him. And that, to me, said all I needed to know. Because when I first came to St. Thomas Aquinas, it was my first principalship, um, my first role, for first position in that role. And to have Father Keith as a partner in the faith and, and uh, teaching our children about our faith was a true pleasure and an honor. And there have been lessons that I've taken throughout my role in all of the other schools that I've been with that I've I learned from Father Keith. Personally, Father has been a uh, support to me uh, in, in my darkest hours as well. And also to, and to my family. Uh, Father Keith, as I mentioned, is a personal friend. And uh, my husband and I have spent many wonderful evenings with Father Keith and my son. And it's, um, 
It's a lot of, there's been a lot of really great memories, and now that he doesn't have to work, there's going to be even more, because he can come over for dinner more often, so I look forward to it. Uh, there's been enough said about what a, uh, a leader he's been walking alongside me. There's nothing I can really add, except that it, um, it is going to be a loss to this community, Father Keith leaving, because he truly does understand and support and is very genuine from the heart, as we all know. So it, it really is going to be a loss. Uh, I wish him well his very well-deserved retirement and hopefully lots of traveling as well. So thank you. As I said, I never knew I was going to talk, but... Uh, Neither did I. Yeah, <laughs> now I get to talk again. Uh, we, we did a bit of a donation um, through our, our, our three staffs, uh, senior admin and our principals. And um, together, you've got the envelope, Father. Uh, we were able to get Father Keith two uh, Premier Seasons Passes tickets to the Generals for the next three years. So that should keep you in mind. Skydiving. 
<laughs> and once you're finished with that, I would recommend taking up a musical instrument, like a French harp, or a French, French horn, pardon me, a French horn, or maybe a harp. Whatever you do, I know you put your heart and soul into it. At this time, on behalf of the parish, our prayers and good wishes go with you, Father. Should you ever need anything on your retirement, we are here for you as you've been for us for the last years. It's not goodbye, Father, it's see you soon. Thank you. John uh, and I go back a long way. Uh, 
I was uh, just walking along the halls of St. Augustine's, minding my own business, and uh, the next thing I knew, I was the chaplain for the Permanent Diakona Program. Deacon John was the director of the Permanent Diakona Program, who assured me that it wasn't his idea. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've been uh, friends uh, for uh, many years, and he's been a great source of wisdom and uh, mentorship, and I really, really appreciate uh, what he has done. Not only the service to the church in particular, I mean in, in general, but the service in the church in particular here at uh, Holy Cross and down at St. Philip. So, John, thank you very much. Can I tell you one quick story about Father Keith? <laughs> My daughter lives in Ajax, she has three boys, right? And uh, Sunday morning she wanted to go to Mass, so they're all lying in bed, she shouted, we're going to Mass, we're going to Mass, because there was no, no movement upstairs. So she said, well you have two options, you can either go and see Father Keith in Oshawa with me, or you go to Bernadette's. She said she couldn't get the car door open quick enough. <laughs> Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So again, I want to thank you very much for your presence here, uh, not only physically, but through the, uh, the gadget there, the, uh, what do you call that? Camera, the camera that is uh, downloaded, uploaded, side swiped, I don't know, to uh, the computer. Remind, remember, I know nothing about computers, and I prefer to stay that way, to tell you the truth. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much and invite you downstairs. And you know what? This is great. This is what community is. This is what the people of God are called to be. Just happy. Should always leave a church feeling happy and good about yourselves. You should never leave looking like you've just been sucking lemons for 20 years. And always have a smile when you leave God's house. May Almighty God continue to bless us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thank and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to you all. All you fathers, mothers, you already have.